Uh, welcome to our first spring meeting of TAG. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know what TAG is, it's the official uh, chapter of the uh, American Advertising Federation. Uh, I have a couple announcements for you before we uh, introduce our board and our awesome speaker. Um, next week we're hosting McGarry Jesse. Uh, next week we have on Friday, that's Friday, that's February 5th, we're going to Enviro Media. Um, keep an eye out on so, uh, our social media platforms for that application. Um, after that, we'll, uh, February 9th is our third meeting. That'll be our, our uh, deadline for spring dues. So keep an eye out for that. That's February 9th. And then we'll open up the uh, New York City application for our networking trip. Uh, that'll be uh, 13th through the 17th of March. of March. That application will be open by the end of the week probably, so keep an eye out for that too. Um, but now we'll, uh, we'll introduce our 2016 officer board. My name is Blake Balser. I'm the president of TAG. I'm Jillian Grekulak. I'm the communications officer. So if you haven't followed these yet, follow them. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sid Sermoni. I'm the officer of membership here at TAG. I'm Marissa surprised the VP of Industry Relations. And if you haven't signed in, here's our bit.ly link. And it's case sensitive. So like three capital letters. Hey, I'm Ryan Stanton. I'm the financial officer. I'm Elizabeth Sauter Lee, I'm the VP of Special Events. I'm Caleb Blanchard, and I'm the Creative Director. I'm Winnie Lee, I'm the Technology Officer. All right, without further ado, please welcome Norby Silverberg from Lab Works. So, I've been asked here to come and talk to you a little bit. I'll try to do my best. Uh, no, uh, seriously. Uh, I know that many people here are very interested about the career that side of um, business. I'm going to walk you through some examples and talk a little bit and then leave it open for Q&A. Uh, first of all, I think that everything changed and wants to change, uh, but we will go through the presentation and we will check why is this the uh, right thing. Uh, first of all, that's me. Uh, senior, you can say that it's because of the gray hair, maybe. <laughs> Vice President. I think that they give vice president titles to everybody here in this country. I'm from Argentina, by the way. Uh, creative director, yes, I create some stuff, I direct some stuff. But, you know, that's how it works. Uh, I started as a copywriter uh, years ago, uh, 1995. And basically, uh, just how you measure a creative, right? You may measure a creative by awards, <coughs> yes. I, I was part of the teams that won all this. I mean, best of show, bronze, cons, everywhere, everything. But you know what? This is so 2015. <laughs> That's what happens exactly with the creators. It's like, you could be really good, but then, you know, nothing, nothing is worth. You need to show every day what you're made of. So uh, I think it is interesting to to see how people see us, but it's also interesting not to believe our own press. Because you never know, you need to be very lucky to win an award as a creator. Uh, but let me show you something that it's a bit interesting. I'll try to make this. <coughs> Poke a stick at a grizzly bear Eat medicine 
sin that's out of date Use your private parts as piranha bait Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Get your toast out with a fork Do your own electrical work Teach yourself how to fly Eat a two-week-old unrefrigerated pie Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Invite a psycho killer inside Scratch a drug dealer's brand new your helmet off in outer space Use a clothes dryer as a hiding place Dumb ways to die What's this red button do? Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dress up like a moose during hunting season Disturb a nest of wasps for no good reason Stand on the edge of the train station platform Drive around the boom gets at a level crossing Run across the tracks between the platforms They may not rhyme but they're quite possibly Be safe around trains, a message from Metro. So, I'm sure that many of you remember this. Uh, I mean, this was the most awarded uh, campaign in the history of Congress, basically. Uh, it was kind of interesting because I, I had a chance to speak with the creatives on this, and they told me that the boring, the boringest brief they ever had was this one. It was horrible. The brief from the client was that they needed to raise awareness about accidents on trains. Period. Right? That was it. And I was really, really happy to see this. Everybody was clapping in the theater in con. It was I mean it was massive. This this campaign won many awards. Uh, but also it, it happened 20 years after this story show you, right? Uh, what is the main difference between those two? Oh, by the way, I'm going to show you something that not many people saw on the next slide. This campaign was so, so, so big that also <coughs> they sold Set fire the to your hair, poke a stick at a grizzly bear, eat medicine that's out of date, use your private parts as piranha bait. What's the dumbest way of all to die? Having no life insurance. Protect your family with life insurance from Empire Life. It's just smart. So many dumb ways to die. It sucks, right? <laughs> we agree it sucks, right? But it was that, that big that they just even sold that, you know, to a life insurance company. Uh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to do with that is just see at least how you know ideas and storytelling are the center and technology sometimes is an instrument on the first one that i show you 20 years ago the idea was very clear on the last one that campaign was all over the world all over the platforms in every single place that you can have a screen 
So basically, I feel that the ideas are still the strong thing that we have to communicate. And uh, one of the, you know, usually what happens <coughs> is that we're tempted to use technology. And then sometimes we lose the focus on the idea itself. Exactly what happened is that on the first one you saw, basically, everything was unidirectional. You were watching a TV, somebody was telling you something, you were reacting, you bought Rolo, you bought another brand, and that's it. What's happening now is that communication is working a little bit more like a social currency. What does it mean? Basically, uh, now, when we finish a production, we just start the conversation. Because when we send a spot to air, everybody will start talking. The main, main uh, objective of a creative today, for me, is to start conversations, create those conversations, and be ready to those. Uh, what is social currency? That, that, that's a term that is, 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 you know, they started using it a few years ago. Basically, social currency is uh, the type of uh, contents that you're sharing with your friends. If you're a person that usually shares great stuff, people would like to see what you share. If you're sharing stuff that is gay, people will just say, oh, like, or even like, you know, whatever, and then move on. What's happening uh, now is that we are asked to do a lot of things, and we are asked to think on a lot of things in advance. But, you know, how should a creative get ready? Uh, I started working when you saw the role of spot. I started working by, by then, and I'm working on the same time that you know this is happening. So how can we get ready? How can you get ready for the next 20 years? Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? You know that Facebook is just you know a few years old. YouTube is 11 years old. This just is happening, and you need to adapt, right? What I think is that. There are many little things that we should not forget. Basically, uh, you know, there are many things that and you may, we may discuss about that later on, but basically we need to absorb. We need to absorb everything that is happening around. Uh, we need to write and design 10 times as asked. If you need to, uh, you know, deliver probably a headline for the print ad, you need to write 100. And I'm not kidding. I have here some people from my agency, and I'm not kidding. If you need to have one or two, you need to uh, put yourself in that pressure to produce as much as you can. It's not quality against quantity. It's quality within the quantity, basically. So that's something that I guess that you, you need to have it every time with you, because the more you think, the more things you can get. Uh, and you know that's probably one of the things that I, I guess that is interesting to know. I never lose either I win or I learn. That's a phrase that I like a lot because 80%, 80% of your work, everything that you're thinking on or designing will never see the light. 80%, I have those stats with me and I'm pretty close to those. 80% of the time that you're thinking on something, oh, that's great, that's cool, will never make it. So what you need to know is that you need to learn from feedback, situations that make you just if you, this is a profession that you cannot work if you will get angry with everybody. It's not. You need to be ready to get that feedback and then you need to be ready to keep writing. And if somebody tells you, eh, this is not good enough, you need to come back and show why. You're, you're good and you're really ready to work in this industry. Everybody's a creative today. My mom with the phone is a creative. Oh yeah, she shouldn't can. Wow, great. What? That's not creative. Does just creating content that is a little bit different. Uh, one of the things that happen is that many technology companies are trying to jump into creative, and then when you ask, okay, what is the essence of the brand? What is the DNA of the brand? What is the strategy behind? Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, no! I just did this video, and then I got a thousand likes. Fine. There is a little bit difference between creative and technology trying to do creative, and creative trying to do technology because that's another mess. That's another thing that we can just discuss further on later on. Um, but you know. I think that one of those things is that you need to learn from things that you cannot publish. Uh, when I moved here uh, 13 years ago, I was invited once to UT to the critique, 
and I was not invited anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was invited once, and the reason was that we were just grading stuff, and my colleagues were very polite and very nice. And, oh yeah, that's a seven, that's a nine, that's a four. Why? It's not because I, I'm a genius or whatever. No, I come from a place where you tell the truth. I, I don't agree with giving you oh positive feedback. You should just give feedback. And if you cannot take it, just move on. Because this is a very, very strict industry. I don't know how many of you just had a chance to do internship. I see one intern in this. Yeah, but you know, it's hard. Why? Because, you know, it's a very hard industry. You have sometimes a client that tells you, hey, everything that I was asking for you for two weeks, I need it now. It has to be now because I didn't supposed to be here. And just they call me, oh, oh, we had a, somebody coming, he's not here, and I need to come two weeks in fact. We're ready for that. You need to be ready for that. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think that you need to have in mind is curiosity. Uh, I think that now, now, nowadays you have more technology available than anybody in the world. Um, and not being curious, I think that it's something that, for me, it's a, it's a no-go. If you're not curious, if you're not trying to see what's happening with things, you cannot be a creator, at least in my parameters, right? Uh, you saw the awards that I showed you before. I mean, can't all those places give you great awards, but it's not easy. You just leave a lot of things on, on the way. Many people work. For some of the awards, you have like probably a team of 20 people working very hard to do it. And then you have the judges. Because the other thing is the judges. I've been on the judging side too. It's very hard because you're just judging pairs. And then you have to establish your criteria to show them why this is better than this, right? So curiosity should be something that, if you're not curious, you're dead, basically. In any, in any single uh, you know, profession, but in advertising or in communication in particular, I think that that's, that's a must. Another thing is continuous education. You're just finishing now school, you think you're done, you're totally wrong. That's not the case. Maybe you're done with what your parents are expecting from you to do, or what they're paying for. But in reality, now you're going to get into a pool with other people that is doing the same than you, and is very curious and is, is pushing and is trying to grow in this in this uh, society, right? Uh, and sorry if I, I, do I sound harsh? I'm trying to tell you what it is, right? Because I don't want you to go. Oh, no, 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 no. I prefer you to be disappointed with me, but then you run a little. I, I hope uh, at least one thing. Um, you know, I, just to be relevant, you need to learn, you need to just study, you need to do it every time. Sometimes you have a chance to study a seminar, uh, a little course or something else, <coughs> go to IPRI and go to, uh, you know, uh, Georgetown. I, I just do, did a lot of those through my life because I want to stay relevant. This is one of the uh, professions, I mean, if you're a doctor and you're 22, you're a doctor, you're 25, you're a doctor, you're 40, you're a doctor, you're 50, you're a great doctor, you're 55, you're Emeritus, whatever, doctor. In advertising, the older you get, the more piece of furniture you become, right? So you need to learn and you need to <coughs> absorb that and then try to communicate and stay relevant. If, if this is a profession that works like that, you need to be on top of it. You need to know exactly what's happening and you need to learn from it and try to reflect in your, in your work. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I guess that is very interesting nowadays that, you know, Eric talks about the UX experience and technology and stuff and coding and everything. You have the chance to learn, experiment, and adjust. That's great because you can create your own things, test them, show them, compare, and then, you know, adjust and try to make things uh, better and quicker. Uh, that didn't happen in, in 10 years ago, I'll say. So that's a great thing that you have. You can prototype, you can code, and you can fail faster. You need to learn to fail faster. Sounds strange, right? But the more you fail fast, you learn how to, you, you have a, a, a way to know how to fail fast. And when you know how to fail fast, then you can succeed. So that's something that I, I the first time I was hearing that from, from a guy from Sweden, I was like, this guy's crazy, it's not working, that's theory. But I, I started to implement that and <coughs> it works. It works, you know, in some point. Um, <coughs> be harsh and be nice. What is that? I mean, you need to be harsh with yourself. You need to be very, very objective on 
is this the best that I've done? I, I used to have a, a, I still have a paper just in front of my office that says, sorry for the words, what the fuck you've done today? And I was watching that like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, good, fine, yeah. And I was like leaving my office like, what's going on? Nah, nah, nah. You need to be hard for yourself because you need to get the best of it and you need to think about it and then share with the others. Because when you get to a point that you're a creative director, you're killing others' ideas, you're killing other babies, right? And then if you're killing my baby, you better have a nicer baby. Or a new baby. Or I want to see the prize you won for having babies before me. You know, this kind of thing. It's kind of strange, right? I don't like little babies. But, but many times when I do when I'm working, uh, if, if somebody in my family says, okay, well, how was your day today? Great, it was great meetings. What was that? I was thinking about my ideas. But I was also helping to build them. That's the nice part. It is giving feedback and just killing things just because is not our profession. Our profession is, or as a creative director, what you need to do is you need to take the best and the brightest and make it better. If your team is not developing good ideas, it's my fault because I'm not you know, giving them something to be, you know, excited about. I'm just trying to do my job and leave it, leave them working till 9, 11, 12, whatever. That's not fair, that's not a job. That's not what it brought me, you know, that's not what I like about this profession. So be harsh, but also be nice. <clears throat> and then be serious and be fun, and be on strategy, basically. You know, there are many ways to approach this business, uh, but you know, you need to be, in one point, you need to be serious and credible. You can be following the climate, you need to be serious, you need to be on strategy. And you need to be fun, you need to have the energy to present. What happens, what happens in, in clients meeting, that's very strange, but sometimes I need to fly to whatever, in New York. So I take a plane, I go to a hotel, I have breakfast, I go to a meeting, and I have 35 minutes, 35 minutes in person with another client to sell him an idea. This person is not waiting for me. He's just in between meetings, maybe he got uh, late breakfast, he just said, well, he, and I have 35 minutes of his attention while he's maybe texting, yeah, 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 whatever. It's insane, right? So we need to be serious. Once I was telling the client, hey, would you mind to just, you know, leave your phone? I just did a plane here, you know? Oh, he was, oh, whoa, oh, that's, that's not a blow. Way to start in that, you know, a meeting. I think that yes, that's a way to start a meeting sometimes because you need some some attention. I was I was just looking around here and I'm, I'm really happy that I only see ten percent of people just there. So that's good. <laughs> <coughs> hey, yeah. uh, but basically, be serious, be fun, and be a strategy. I'm going to show you some work that I, I was doing, and, and it, that's a teamwork because it, you know, I had a chance and I can tell you little stories behind those spots that I've been working that I think that are fun, that are interesting, that are you know, uh, good to share and then we can leave it for a bit. Share something juicy. How, how do you set a spot like that, right? <laughs> and, and, and that, was, that was kind of crazy because, you know, when, when I saw that idea and, and we were working on the team on that idea, uh, my boss told me, no, you go and set it. I was like, what? Yeah, you go and set it. Okay, okay, I'll go, I'll go and set it. So I was chewing in front of three clients for two minutes without saying a word. I was like, and there was a there was an American audience, Midwestern, very conservative. So I was doing that, and they're like, can you stop with that? And then, and, and then I told them the idea, fine, they love it, they like it, and 
Or by the way, they were saying, okay, where do we shoot this? Where are the best llamas in Peru? Let's go to Peru and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, yes, let's go to Peru. And then we went to Peru and we shot that. <laughs> <laughs> but then we have a lot of, you know, comments and stuff, and then people was mocking up this, and uh, American girl was selling llamas, you know, with the Star Wars name on it. It's, that was crazy. That was interesting. Um, I'll show you another example of, of how can you manage to create stuff when you don't have a lot of money? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, uh, and the client wants to have a lot of things, you know? They want to have a lot of things, you need to do that, place this, this, do it, do it, whatever. Okay, so we tell them, okay, we'll do a lot of those. Uh, we did like eight of those spots. But I told them, you can't change anything. She's like, no, 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 you can't change anything. That, that's the way to do it. Okay, three, two, done. Ah, la peinture. Un art silencieux et pourtant si parlant. Alors que... A German shepherd that speaks French. Contradictory, like Starburst, because they're solid yet juicy. They're like, either, even though we, we did ones that was very out there with bands on TV. <laughs> that, that was very interesting, very interesting. Uh, another one, that, that's a very interesting one to see because this client, I was telling you that on the other case of the, you know, the client for, for the uh, Don't Waste the Eye was kind of like, uh, you know, hard brief, horrible brief. In this case, the brief from this client that is really basically has a WTF factor. What is that? If an idea is just WTF, it should be WTF. If not, they won't approve it. So basically, you need to come. Imagine we're like five agencies pitching to get a spot. I mean, you should see the ideas that they didn't approve. But this is the one that went to air and that was really, I think it was, it was fine. Hey. I'm worried you're running around with the wrong crowd. But they're nice. Really? It seems to me that they're using you for your Skittles. Shouldn't let people take advantage of you. I know. It's messed up. Pluck the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! So, I mean, I mean, that client was really, really, really interesting because it was kind of a crazy client. It was really fun. And uh, we came up with many ideas that they loved and they liked. Uh, and, and we just had fun, you know, working on it. And also, one of the spots that I'll share with you is, is, a, is a local uh, client, is the Texas Lottery. Uh, probably the Texas Lottery is the client that has more barriers than any client I've ever had, basically. Everything you'll see from Texas Lottery, you cannot see. Kids, alcohol, any reference to, uh, you know, strange behavior. You cannot show people getting rich. The lottery, right? <laughs> the lottery. So, uh, oh, okay. So, white people play, oh, I still have fun. Like, really? <laughs> you can't do anything like that. So, every time you need to think about this fun for them, you need to be very extremely creative because there's not a lot of room, right? Uh, I mean, if you see the 12, when I became uh, director of the account, they gave me the 12 barriers, and I was like, yeah, let's put the logo right now. That's it. But, you know, considering all the limitations, we just push a little bit more, and then we try to find a way to tie some of the products with, you know, something that could be uh, really interesting. I'll show you this part just once more. Zero Factory, how can I help you? It's the people from the Texas Lottery. This is Marlon. A new scratch-off? The $500 million cash scratch-off. Half a billion in prizes. That's a lot of zeros. You got it. Attention on the floor. We need more zeros! Play the new $500 million cash scratch-off from the Texas Lottery. With half a billion in total prizes, that's a lot of zeros. But what happened with this is that the Texas lottery just 
as last week, we were working on a project and they pulled us off the project telling, hey, we're selling too much. What? Yes, we're selling too much. So we're just, now, can you explain? Can you elaborate a little bit? <laughs> yes, we cannot produce great spots now because we're selling too much. And I was like, that's crazy. It's like, I never heard that before. So in some cases, what happened is that some of the ideas may not be your most favorite ones, but they work. They really work, and they're they're moving the needle. So that's something also to consider. You cannot be funny and crazy every time, like you're for, for skills or starbursts. Sometimes you need to be very strategic and very uh, clear on where what to hit and how to how to move on. One of the things that I want to share with you too is is something that you know it is very close to my heart. That is giving back to the community. I think that uh, we can. I mean, I've been saying this for a long time. I, I sold, you know, lottery tickets, pizza, beer, what, everything you can imagine in 20 years. Uh, but also, I think that if we use our, our you know, smartness or readiness or contacts to do something good for the community, that makes sense. I want to share something with you that that's corporate responsibility work uh, that happened a year ago and a half, year and a half ago um, with Domino's Pizza. Uh, there is uh, our client too, and we had a chance to to be very close to one of the uh, you know the main uh, marketing people there. And I told him that story just over dinner, and so they put the money. They did. That was a good persuasion conversation after a few glasses of wine, <laughs> but it happened. So I want you to check. <coughs> I think many of our Texas School for the Deaf students really haven't had that kind of exposure to the world of music. There are all sorts of different events that the students can't really partake in. I definitely think it's important for a deaf teenager especially to experience music and experience club settings. A lot of people think, ugh, deaf people won't enjoy concerts they can't hear. But that's not true. We can quote unquote hear the music if we focus on the frequency, the beats, and the vibrations. concert that I've been able to go to. The vibes were coming out of our body and into our body. It was so cool. Because deaf people cannot hear, they don't know what music is like. But thanks to this concert, we experienced the language of music. to create in our communities, but also to help people with 
wants to start, they don't know where to go. Uh, so, with that said, uh, questions? I'm open up to anybody who has questions for me. And be frank, I mean, shoot it, eh? I, I'm, I'm fine. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, uh, first of all, I started, you know, reading a lot, reading, oh, everything, everything that comes. My son is here, he, he'll tell you I have plenty of books, I read everything, I read a lot of books, so here to now. Reading is good because then you learn not only about uh, your subject, uh, you learn about life in general. And for me, uh, what I do usually is I, I alternate work and pleasure. Work and play, work and play, teach rules every time. Uh, also, what happened is that, you know, I studied, a, I studied as an intern, and what I learned is that you need to be indispensable. They need to need you. So I went every day to work early before my creative team came, and I was just, what do you need? Give me a brief. Give me everything. Give me whatever nobody wants to do. Give me that. Because then you have chances. Because for the fun brief, everybody would like it, right? But for shitty briefs, eh, nobody likes them. So get them, get them. And then you just be useful to them. Then what happens is that you need to start learning also a little bit of strategy. Because you, you can, you know, present yourself in a different light. And you can show people that you're doing a lot of the works. And you're just making lives easier for them too. Uh, that's the way to, to grow at some point. Also studying a lot, learning, going to you know any, any seminar that you feel is good. Also writing a lot and being able to present and being able to uh, work as a team. That's not an individual job. You're just in different companies and different agencies with different people with different objectives, different agendas. Uh, you need to be very careful, you need to be very honest and sincere because that's probably that's the way to do it. You don't know, you never know. Sometimes you can work with somebody and then that person is the new boss in another company and becomes your client. I used, I had an intern that then was my client. So you better treat it well, you know, you never know. But that's how you probably start, you need to start learning, improving, present, not be afraid of asking questions and then, you know, that, that's how you get there. Yes. Uh, what's the failure, fat, fat, failure you learned the most from? Oh, the failure I learned the most. <coughs> uh, we had a, a very interesting idea for Middle Light. Very interesting, very fun. It was about uh, you know a guy that was trying to be funny, and then a group start chasing him to the city. Uh -huh. So <laughs> we did the mistake of producing that in a city. And the movie escaped. <laughs> so, it almost got two guys almost killed. Everything canceled, but it was, I mean, we were just literally seeing the guy just, he didn't die. But we learned that when you're trying to shoot something, try to be realistic on how to do it of where to do it. So the next time, because we canceled that shooting, we went back, we went to a Plaza de Toros, and we fake everything. So we were in the safe environment. So at least people can run if something happened, and just get into the game. Those one. But I mean, I learned many things uh, from the failures. Uh, you know, sometimes presenting something. Uh, I presented a great idea, uh, was produced, and they spent two million dollars, and never went to air. And I was like, yeah, I, because I, I think that I, I was I was thinking that that was great, and then focus group killed it. So that was a failure. Yes, that, that was not good. And I fail every day. I fail many times when I cannot give good feedback. I fail when I think that that's a good idea and it's not. I fail when I cannot stop people thinking on something that I know that is not going anywhere. But those are some of those. I can tell you, you know, privately over here. <laughs> yes. You said that the more you fail, the more you succeed, right? Yeah. So by that you also need to learn when to stop. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, yes. What I think is that uh, you need to uh, see many things and then make a decision. Being a creative director is very hard because sometimes you may pick the wrong thing and it goes nowhere and then you present. You need to know many things to make a decision. You need to know the client, you need to, you need to see the environment, you need to see the competitive, you need to see how your team is doing, you need to see a budget, you need to see a timing, and then make a decision. It's kind of hard. It's easy to fail and on, on productions. It's super easy to fail because you think, oh, we have a million dollars now. You don't have it. And then you just, every time you're shooting, every minute counts. So okay. if you're asking for a different take, a different take, a different take, it rains, down. You're just, you're screwed. So you need, you need to be very, very uh, careful on what decisions you take, you make. Yeah. So, this is a very driven individual. So what, my question is, what makes you like get up every day? And to, and to, in relation to your yeah. profession? Uh, basically, what I mean, it's trying to find a place that people want to come to work. <coughs> I mean, and trying to find the next one. Everything you saw, awards or whatever, that's okay. I don't have a union in my shell. I just put them somewhere here. That's it. Why? Because I don't want to see them. Because I see them, I think that I'm great. So the point is that you need to be sure that uh, you're getting every day and you're gonna get the best of everybody every day. The best, and then make it even better. So that, that's what I, I like about it. And also trying to find new ways to communicate. You know, um, I'm, a, you know I'm from Argentina, I came here to work in the Hispanic market, but now I'm working in total market. Because as I see here in this you know, group, it's not that everybody is white or Hispanic or Asian. It's a mix. So that's what America is now. So I came 13 years ago thinking that I'm going to be just working only to people that speak Spanish, Univision, whatever. And now it's major league. So, you know, that's good. I want to, you know, have, you know, the best chances to do great work. That's what it, you know, makes me just wake up and go, you know, to work. For people who don't have English as their first language, do you think that's a barrier to become a successful <coughs> creative? No, I don't think so. Actually, I think that it works in your advantage. Because, you know, in some, I mean, I have two languages. Some of my clients have one. So, you know. Sometimes, <laughs> better. And sometimes I tell them, and that, that's funny because sometimes when I was selling an idea, you know, when you sell an idea and Sometimes I practice how to sell ideas, right? But when you set an idea and you don't know if they will be engaged or not, then you try to play the Hispanic card. The Hispanic <laughs> card is, oh, and, and there we have a guy that is like, oh, how do you say this word? Uh, the thing that is like, oh, they say, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, so, uh, okay, okay. And then, by playing that card, you get them engaged. <laughs> and then they cannot get out of it. <laughs> because, you know, so that's the way to do it. I mean, it's funny because it, it's using the language in a way that has an advantage. <coughs> Obviously, many times I'm in meetings over the phone that I just <coughs> understand some of the stuff that they say, to be honest. That's why we have account service people who take great notes and that usually they are my translators. Sometimes when I say something that is like, they, they understand what I try to say, you know, and they apply their knowledge to explain that, right? So that's good. Sometimes I can play the, oh, 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 you know, in my country we do this. Yeah. And then, okay. That's, yeah, oh, you know, you can play with that. I think that you don't have to abuse it. You can play it a little bit. You need to, to understand when to use it, how to use it, because if not, you become a stupid guy. Basically, but if you can just push in the right moment some things, I think that you can take it as an advantage. Yes. yes. You mentioned maintaining relevant in today's advertising. Mm -hmm. um, should we be focusing on traditional media as much as we used to, or keeping that in our body, or shifting to new markets with social media and app bases? <coughs> I think that. Uh, I saw many, many of the work from uh, the 
you know, people from UT. And I think that in some cases, some of the work is very traditional. Uh, I think that you don't have to think on, 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 on the media, you need to think on the ideas. And then, try to understand how you can make this idea bigger. I mean, everybody now is in social media. If you're not in social media, you're dead, basically. So, how, how to approach, you know, a presentation? You, you need to know that you, you cannot ask people to do things that you don't do. So, if you don't watch TV, <coughs> Why are you going to do something for TV if your age, I mean, your target is not watching TV, right? If you're on social media, yeah, let's do social media. But how, it needs to be very interesting, so you will share it. Sometimes when I have presentations, it's like, oh, we're creating an app where the place will do this, uh, that. Would you do it? Uh, I don't know. So, people won't. I mean, you need to do stuff for yourself. You're the target. Basically, uh, when when you're working, I mean, if you're between 25 and 35, you're in a range of millennials. That you know that word you heard that word a lot, I guess. For me, it's kind of a it's, it's losing some value. It's used as an insult to uh, your soul. <laughs> but anyway, you need to think in, in general on the idea, and then see how you can make it bigger, how you can expand your thoughts, how this can be, become. You know, relevant. There are some guys that oh, I, I want a viral video. You can create a viral video, dude. You need to create a good idea, then it becomes viral, right? So that's probably the way to start thinking. Yeah. You said you read a lot. Which books, uh, which book has a Facebook trend towards your career success? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Let, me on. Let me get out of this conversation now. <laughs> many, many. What would be the best book for us? Yeah. Probably, I mean, no, no, I don't want you to. <laughs> we need to. No, no, no. No, no. One of the books that I read many years ago, and it was, you know, The Art of War. Uh, I think The Art of War is great because it talks about strategy and, and everything. But then, I mean, it's complex. I can send you an email with books if you want. What are you reading right now? Uh, I just got a, a, a book. I'm, I'm reading now some novels. I don't want to talk about it. Just going, going back to some of those. But now that's what I have now. But basically, I, I, I turn between, you know, work uh, and pleasure, but also language, because I want to keep my Spanish, you know, there. Uh, so yes, but I, I'll send you a list. I have plenty of books in, in my office. I have lots of books, and I use them as everyone just to drag them, to bring them back, at least to, to see those. But there are many, plenty, plenty of books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you talked about like your intake that you read a lot. What about what are your other like, creative outlets? Uh, like, do for they me? Kind of help, yeah, do they kind of help inform your work? Just doing other, writing other things or playing music or anything? Uh, I mean, I, I like movies too. It's a short film. Uh, uh, I directed it. That was fun. Uh, basically, I, I, I write, I like to write a lot. Sometimes I don't publish that. I'm, I'm working on a novel that is going nowhere. But Go somewhere, you know, somewhere. Uh, but basically, what I like is to, to express myself uh, as much as I can. What happens when you become a creative director? Sometimes you have less time to do what you like. And you need to be sitting on meetings. Actually, today, today I was in nine meetings back to back for seven different brands. That's, I mean, I was like, seriously, just, uh, you know, that that's not that's not what I like to do, but I have to. Do. You know? Yep. All right. A couple more. Yes. Did you have a mentor? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I have many mentors, I'll say. If that's the case, do you have any advice on how to go about finding them? Or? Uh, you can download the app. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, in, 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 many, in many cases, uh, what, what happens is that you, I think that you find mentors of your career. Um, it's strange, but I learned many good things from really bad creatives. It, I mean, it sounds strange, but I learned what not to do. In this profession, you need to learn what not to do. And then you'll figure out what to do. But basically, I mean, I had this guy that just throws the work and went to take a nap. What's that work? 
is he laughing? <laughs> He's just meditating. Yeah. I learned something from him. One of the things that he told me too is that you need to be a great salesman. You need to sell. Because imagine that I have a, I have a, you know, I created this, and I come to you and say, okay, you tell me, okay, what is your idea? Oh, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's going on to, you know, it's, it's <laughs> You're boring, <laughs> right? You need to know how to sell. If you're not convinced about that, how do you think I'm going to buy it, and how I'm going to sell it to the other client, right? That was a, uh, something that one of my mentors told me. Uh, and, and then again, you just switch mentors at some points and you become a mentee, is it saying that? Mentee? Uh, because you just, there, there is a point that you feel that you can, you know, learn, you, you can learn from everybody every time, but you can also switch and give some advice sometimes. You know, a mentor, I think that the best mentors are the ones that they don't tell you, do this. They just show you what to do. And then you learn from examples, right? You learn how, how they present, how they work, how they adjust the stuff, how they practice, how they go hard on, on their beliefs, how they stop the ball, how they blame the clients for something, you know? It, this is the type of things that you, I mean, you learn a lot from, from, you know, from the people that does stuff and from the people that says stuff. Yeah. All right, give it up for Norby. Ask any more questions. Any more pizza? Because we have a lot.